It's Duke and fifth-ranked South Carolina. SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regions Bank. We're courtside here in Columbia. Carolyn Peck, Eric Freak, great to have you with us. And this is a great recruiting class for South Carolina. Number one in the country. Look great on paper, but it turns out they're pretty good so far in the court as well. They're living up to as advertised. You've got three of those freshmen that are in the starting lineup. Let's take a look at how it breaks down for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Well, Aliyah Boston, Zia Cook, Bree Beal are those three freshmen. And I think with how those three have come into the ball game this year's season, it makes South Carolina a contender for the Final Four. A young team needs leadership, and you can see at the top of that list two players who won national titles here at South Carolina, Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. But Kiki has played some of her best basketball, and she said she's been the benefactor of having Aaliyah Boston anchor the offense on the inside. It's opened up things for her on the perimeter. Duke Blue Devils are 7-3 and three on the season. They've already played one conference game, 1-0 and in the ACC. There's no question who their number one player, their go-to is Haley Gorecki. Haley Gorecki is one of the smartest players that I've seen. She's able to find the open player. She also keeps the pressure on the defense attacking the basket. And if you give her a look, she also can knock it down from the three-point line. Gorecki Third in the conference in scoring. Well, you can see leading the team in scoring, in three-point shooting, in assists per game, in steals per game. She also averages six rebounds a game, so she is key to their success here today against the South Carolina team that is rolling. They've won four in a row. They're 10-1 and one on the season. And another big crowd turning out at Colonial Life Arena. Freshman Aaliyah Boston on the opening tip. It's one by Gorecki and Duke, and a great start for the Blue Devils. Right away, Gorecki, no hesitation attacking. They, Duke wants to score early and not have to score against the pressure of the South Carolina defense. Here's Herbert Harrigan back to one of the freshmen, Bree Beal from Rock Island, Illinois. Outside, Ty Harris knocks down the three. So you've got the three freshmen in Cook and Boston and Beal, and then you've got Herbert Harrigan in career game number 115 and Harris in career game number 118 for South Carolina. You take a look at the Duke starting five. Mm -hmm. Nate Odom is leading the team in rebounding, second on the team in scoring. She's one to watch as well, number five. And the defense, man-to-man -man pressure, that was one of the things that Duke was concerned about with how tough a defensive team South Carolina is. Uh, you talk about toughness, Kyra Lambert is as tough as they come. She gets the second chance, and here is Odom. There you see Kyra Lambert, the grad student in the business school now at Duke. Three ACL injuries in her career. More on her as we go along. Good movement, another open look, but this time Cook can't knock it down, and it's a rebound for Lambert. Odom will now slow things down for Duke. When Duke now having a new starting lineup, having Kyra Lambert back in the lineup after being out for two years, seven months, and 18 days. Lambert knew that one was down too, knocks down the three-pointer. I got to talk to her this week, and Lambert, she talked about having been out that long and how she wasn't going to hesitate. She wasn't going to take a day for granted. She was going to leave everything on the court. Carolyn counted up the days to keep it simple. She missed the last two years. <laughs> she last played in the 2016-2017 season, an ACL tear of the 2017 NCAA tournament. Count the basket and the foul, a chance for a three-point play at Zia Cook. You know, what's amazing about this South Carolina team, so much is made about Aaliyah Boston and Kiki Herbert Harrigan as the post players, the paint points that South Carolina is able to manufacture. Almost half of those come from the guards attacking the basket just like Zia Cook did. Anime Akinbadi James picked up the personal foul and Cook, freshman from Toledo, finishes the three-point play. Gorecki pulls the trigger, can't get the three, and it's Cook with the rebound. Jade Williams has come on for Duke, and it's another three-pointer for South Carolina. They make, on average, five a game. Bree Beal hits the three. The confidence and composure that this whole team plays with as a whole, it's hard to tell which one of the freshmen, which one of the seniors. Gorecki can't get it on the drive, and Herbert Harrigan lets it go out of bounds. It's South Carolina ball. 
just moving the ball, unselfish play, and these freshmen understand when it's a good shot. They have learned that in these first 11 games, so they're shooting the ball with a lot of confidence. Here is Aaliyah Boston. Knocked away, and good child with it for Duke. Gorecki, wide open look for three. Usually she'll make you pay from there, and a foul is called on Jade Williams. South Carolina 10 and 1 on the season. Their last game they beat Purdue Sunday here in Columbia. 85-49 was the final six players in double figures for South Carolina. It gives you an idea of the balance that Dawn Staley's team has gone with scoring so far this season. Well, it doesn't have to be, you know, one thing a team can't say, oh, I'm going to take this player away because they've got so many weapons. Rebound for Odom. Here's Gorecki. Back outside, Lambert, another three. Talked about how Gorecki keeps the pressure on the defense. Duke doesn't want to have to play in the half court against South Carolina's tough defense. Herbert Harrigan gets her first points, averaging a team best 13.7 a game. Already five lead changes here in the opening minutes in Columbia. But isn't that a smooth jumper? It's pretty, like silk. Good child, trying to drive on Harris. Nice little move to get free, and Duke is getting things done offensively here on the road. Harris. Tapped out by Herbert Harrigan, and it will be Duke basketball. Duke's last game was against Boston College last Sunday, their ACC opener. They won by 12. Haley Gorecki had 27 points for Joanne P. McCauley's team in their ACC opener. Mila Goodchild shot the ball well from the three-point line. It's all starting to come together. I think that Duke's getting used to playing with Kyra Lambert back in the lineup. Williams lost the handle, couldn't get it back at South Carolina basketball. Duke last year, 15 wins, six coming in conference play, first time under the 500 mark in ACC play, and only the second time in 12 years that they missed the NCAA tournament under McCauley. But different feeling for this Duke team. They've got a little depth here. Uh, you mentioned Lambert coming back as Boston scores on the inside for South Carolina. Well, I thought that Duke would use more of that zone defense to stop the play inside, but the advanced positioning of Aaliyah Boston, so impressive by the freshman. Good child gets called for the foul as Harris takes a tumble. Aaliyah Boston just positions herself inside Odom and the pass is delivered, leading her right to the basket. This matchup zone defense, keep an eye on Boston down low of recognizing how to get to the inside. That time, Odom kept her on her back. Odom with the box out. Good child quickly into the front court. As Carolyn mentioned, Duke wants to push it, get up into the front court. Herbert Harrigan was there defensively as Williams was off the mark. And Gorecki, good job defensively. Another steal for Haley Gorecki, as we showed you, leading the team in that category. She's such a headsy player. Right place, right time. Always has active hands defensively and eyes up on the offensive end. A three-pointer from Goodchild is short, and that will get us to our first media timeout. We've gone back and forth here in the opening minutes with South Carolina on top of the Blue Devils by one. They open up your ability to see different things with their ability because they, you know, they play probably a, a lot more like, they practice a lot more like upperclassmen because they come to work every day just playing hard, competing. And four of these 
of this number one recruiting class ranked in the top 11. And Dawn Staley talked about coming into practice. It's so competitive, and she has to change things up every day, keeping them interested because they want things to move and happen, and they transfer that from practice into games. I mean, so far in the first quarter, everybody in the starting lineup has scored. You can see the freshman class, the highest scoring class, almost 35 points a game. South Carolina averaging 81 points a game. That's good for 15th in Division I. Dukes changed up into a 3-2 zone now to give a different look to South Carolina. South Carolina goes to the bench. Victoria Saxton, the sophomore, comes into the game. Destiny Henderson in as well. Henderson has been very good off the bench for South Carolina. Shot clock now down to five. Open look for Beal. Over the top, Duke ball. In practice yesterday, Eric, South Carolina practiced against a zone even if the shot clock went off don staley wanted her team to be patient to find the best shot not just come down and start jacking up shots because you see a zone both teams now five of 11 from the field duke down one with the ball zana baines has come in for duke she's a freshman lambert Shot clock down to three. Lambert has to launch from deep to beat the clock and didn't catch iron. It's a shot clock violation and a stop for South Carolina. One of the things that Don Staley always emphasizes is you're going to play tough defense, and they've been holding their opponents to shooting just under 30% a game. Harris, tough spot. Pulled down by Akinbadi James. After a back and forth start, things have settled down a little bit out of the first media timeout. Here's Harris. And knocked out of bounds by the long arms of Nay Odom as Goodchild comes back in. Thursday, January 2nd, mark your calendar. It's the start of women's basketball conference play, and we'll have complete coverage of every game that night as we whip around the conference going to each game for the best action. You can also watch each game on the ESPN app. It all starts 7 Eastern, 6 Central right here on the SEC Network. Carolyn will be right here for Kentucky taking on South Carolina. Foul called on Duke. Missouri will be at Tennessee, Georgia at Ole Miss, Florida, Mississippi State, Auburn at Vandy, Alabama at LSU, and then the nightcap, Texas A&M at Arkansas. That's going to be interesting because you'll have Kennedy Carter going against Chelsea Dungy, two Powerful scores in the SEC. Henderson. Herbert Harrigan. Harris can't get it. Knocked away by Sexton. And the officials will give it to Duke. Well, now Duke making it a little difficult for South Carolina to find some rhythm on offense. I don't think that South Carolina has really gotten a read of what kind of defense Duke has been in. They've changed up just about every possession. Good steal by Saxton. Chance the other way for Henderson. That was going to be one of the big keys for Duke. Could they handle the pressure from South Carolina? Turnover turns in the points there, and now South Carolina's on top by three. And I think that that kind of play just amps up the Gamecocks to continue to go after more and more steals. Henderson forces another turnover, and it'll be South Carolina ball. Victoria Saxon comes in off the bench and immediately in the passing lane, up the line, doesn't give up on the play, and has the heads up to get the ball to Bill, who then Passes it on to Henderson. Saxton and Henderson are taking on different roles here. These are kids who were the freshmen last year. Now this hot shot freshman class comes in, and if you're a sophomore, you may wonder, well, where's my minutes? Where's my time? And especially Destiny Henderson and plays like that from Saxton, they're earning their time and getting more of it off the bench. And Doug Staley talks about Henderson as a six starter. And she started a lot of handful of games last season and was an impact but now accepting that role and embracing being that spark off the bench for South Carolina. 
That one's well off the mark. Odom tried to drop it down to Williams. Henderson just flying all over the court right now. Herbert Harrigan tipped it into the hands of Henderson. Henderson on the drive, earns a trip to the free throw line. That's Kiki Herbert Harrigan, rather, and a couple of free throws coming up. The biggest difference I've seen from South Carolina's team from last year to this year is the free net, free them of the ball movement. It doesn't get stuck. They catch, check right away. Do they have the option? If not, they're giving it up, passing up shots sometimes, but keeping the ball moving. Very unselfish play. You know, you talked to Don Staley as we saw a few minutes ago. We had a conversation about this year versus last year, and, and sometimes that breath of fresh air, things move a little bit better. The team moves the ball a little bit better. They're a little bit more active on defense. Not that last year was a terrible year. They had 23 wins, 13 in the conference. They went to the fifth straight Sweet 16, but you noticed right away this is a much different feel around this South Carolina team this year. Well, it all works well if you have freshmen who want to be led and then you have leaders that embrace that leadership role. And the more that these freshmen listen to the upperclassmen and contribute, the more really ownership the seniors have taken of this team. Good child stood her ground defensively to knock it out of bounds. It'll be South Carolina ball. Sometimes it's tough to get kids to check their ego at the door, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't check it at the door, Dawn Staley, she'll check will, it for you. she will check it for you, <laughs> and she'll take that claim check and throw it in the garbage That's and tell you to right. go find it because you got to do it one way here, and it's worked very well for South Carolina, as we all know. Well, in talking with their sports information director, Diana talked about how this team, when they go out to dinner, Oh, that's a nice shot by Goodchild. But when South Carolina players, they go out to dinner, they sometimes have to quiet them down in the restaurant because they're talking so much to each other. I've seen teams where they go in a restaurant and they spend more time looking down at that cell phone. That's not the case with this South Carolina team. Then there's our television broadcast team that doesn't put the fork down <laughs> <laughs> during dinner. There's Cook. Lambert will bring it up. Final seconds of the first quarter. Down to six, down to three, down to two, taken away by Lily Grissett. And that is the end of the first quarter. South Carolina really turned up the defense second half of that first quarter. They're up by two after one. Who am I? I'm a senior forward for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Some things you might not know about me, I'm from a tiny island in the Caribbean named Anguilla. My favorite designer brand is Gucci. In addition to playing basketball, I want to be a sports model. Who am I? I'm Makia Herbert Harrigan. And she is still a member of the South Carolina team. And she may be one of the top recruits for Dawn Staley when you think about it after last year. She told Dawn that she wanted to transfer. She wanted to check in her other options. And instead of just saying, well, there's the door, <laughs> it's going to lock on your way out, no coming back. She said, take your time. How can I help? But Dawn felt confident that she would come back, and she did. And that senior who has that championship pedigree is a big part of their success so far this year. And that's a sign of a good coach in Dawn Staley knowing her players, knowing her mentality, and knowing what she had coming in that was going to be surrounding Kiki, that Kiki would really – she would grow and flourish flourish with this freshman class that has come in and that's exactly how it's turned out you know in that portal system some coaches say when you enter the portal hit the door let the door hit you on the way out right but sometimes you need to be a little patient and let players figure some things out South Carolina turning it up defensively on Duke Leticia Ami here has come into the game. You can see the first four minutes of the game. Up to that first media timeout, teams are shooting right around 50%. But after that media timeout, Duke was one for six from the field. South Carolina was one for seven from the field to close out the first quarter. That was a slow start for South Carolina. They normally average almost 24 points a game and shoot 53%. But today, only had 16 points and shooting 35% from the floor. 
Williams, 7 of 14 from the free throw line, misses them both. And here comes Harris for South Carolina. Duke still in the 3-2 zone. Changing things up, making South Carolina really have to think about what they're running. Trying to feed it inside against the zone and good fight by the redshirt freshman from Ontario. Ami here, her first two. Now Ty Harris on Gurecki. Started out, it was Bree Bill. Foul called on Duke as Odom gets whistled for the foul. That's her second. Jada Claude will head to the bench as Goodchild comes in. And what South Carolina did was overload the zone. You saw Henderson run the Henderson run the baseline. It really sealed Claude on the backside of Amahir and was able to throw over the top of the zone. Needing some size, Uchenna Woke will come in for Duke, 6'6 sophomore out of Texas, making her ninth appearance this year. Leah Boston calling for the ball. Give the big girl, give her a touch. Largest lead for South Carolina. Brissette knocks it down for her first two. Talk about the new faces of South Carolina, new places for some of the players. Lily Grissett, she played the post the first two years of her career, now has moved out playing the three. Boston picks up her first personal. Well, I think you're going to find a position that may not be comfortable, but you're going to make it suit yourself if you want to get some playing time on a team that plays a lot of players right now. And as you mentioned before, it's very competitive in practice now for South Carolina, right. where that really wasn't the case. You find the position that's least populated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we've learned the Carolyn Peck method of playing. So Baines at the free throw line. Freshman from Blackwood, New Jersey. She's on the board, her first two points. That slows things down for the moment, but Boston on the inside for two. She's got great mitts, gets that offensive rebound, keeps the ball high, and a nice touch on the glass. And Grissett gets called for the foul. It'll be Duke ball on the side. Saturday, it's a men's hoop doubleheader here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number 12, Auburn will be hosting Lehigh in our first game at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we'll take you to College Station, Oregon State taking on the Aggies. That's coming up on Saturday on the SEC Network. Bain slipped and fell, taken away by South Carolina. Seven turnovers now for Duke. And that's a turnover for South Carolina. That's their fourth. You got to live with that as a coach. Your freshman was trying to make an aggressive move. You watch that on tape and say, listen, young buck, you've got to make sure you got that pivot foot set before you take off. Gorecki, spin move to try to get free, has the shot blocked as Grissett comes away. Tough pass for Henderson to handle, and it's a turnover for South Carolina. Little too quick for Lili. I'm impressed with Lili, though, and talking to Don Staley about Lili making that transition from the post to the three. She had to get herself in better shape, had to drop a few pounds, really play lighter on her feet. So far, she's done that, and she's still rebounding strong from that three spot. Baines on the drive, threw it away. Another turnover for Duke. Duke with eight turnovers. They average 18 a game. They had 25 against Boston College, yet still won. Now you're not going to win a whole lot of games in the ACC turning the ball over like that. Brissett drives, scores, and is fouled.
There's some of that quickness you were talking about. Well, a lot of players think when I go to the three, I'm going to get jack up shots from the outside. But Lily Grissett finds opportunities to slice when she can get, get down on that baseline and attack because of her length and size. When she gets inside, she can go over players. Lily, the sophomore from Durham, here facing the Blue Devils. And getting off to a good start here off the bench. Five points, perfect from the field, two for two. Odom, turnaround over Boston, yes. That's what Duke can do more of, use their versatility. Odom is a player that can play one through four. So is Gorecki. Good child saw that. Harris jumped out to meet the pass to prevent the turnover. Inside of six to play, first half. Fifth ranked South Carolina taking on Duke. As we wind down non-conference play, Boston draws a crowd. Shot clock didn't reset. Good job by Amihir to scoop it up. Anderson trying to make it tough for Kyra Lambert. Feed inside, Boston got there defensively. Goodchild on Harris. And a foul called on Goodchild. That's her second. South Carolina could do the hockey style substitution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have to change on the fly. That's not allowed, but they could if it was allowed. That's four going out right now as Harris is going to stay in. Saxton comes in. Cook comes in. Herbert Harrigan comes in. Beal comes in. I get everybody? Yeah. It, it felt like it was a hockey game for I a know, second. right? <laughs> You see, South Carolina is going to overload that zone. Cook attacks, drops it down for Herbert Harrigan. I think South Carolina's team last year see a zone, they start jacking up shots, really trying to play a game of horse. Who's making shots, who's missing shots? Legal screen. The foul called on Jade Williams, and the lead all of a sudden is now 11 for South Carolina. Attack, attack, attack. You make good things happen. Actors win, reactors lose every time. South Carolina has outscored Duke 13-4 here in the second quarter, taking an 11-point lead over the Blue Devils. They've done a nice job of being patient against the Duke zone. And especially once you get the ball to the top, you see Aaliyah Boston riding the defense up high. Now, Lily Grissett's got to recognize if the ball is being passed down low to your big girl, you got to keep yourself out wide. Eight different scores for South Carolina. It's been a struggle for Duke here this quarter. They've attempted two shots. They've turned the ball over five times. I think they, that South Carolina has picked up the pressure, especially on Haley Gorecki, not letting her make so many decisions with the basketball. Cook. Herbert Harrigan to Saxton. Saxton a strong finish. The overload, the South Carolina offense, leads to the diagonal pass back. Nine different scores now for South Carolina, and a foul called on Zaya Cook. Yeah, Zaya Cook, she got a lot of attention after she had committed to South Carolina because she was just an entertaining show in high school. She even got the attention of Dwayne Wade and Chance the Rapper. They were they were tweeting about Zaya Cook. High school All-American, the number four recruit in the class of 2019. And that's going to be a foul on Ty Harris. That's her first. Asana Baines has, she's tripped a couple of times. Oh. 
she rolled that ankle. But she hopped up. She's tough. Coach B talked about how she's got that poker face. She never changes expression. So you don't ever know. <laughs> Is she hurting pretty bad? She's not going to show it in her face. She said Baines is not afraid of anything. Thought she was a big key tonight. Been making a lot of shots lately. Gorecki on the drive. She's been held in check just those two early points off the opening tip. One for six from the floor now. And Gorecki leads this team in free throw attempts. She's not been able to get to the free throw line so far tonight. She's not able to get touches. Is that a lot of credit going to Zaya Cook? Well, you had Bri Bill, then you had Lily Grissett, you had Ty Harris on her for a while, and now Zaya Cook mixing up who's defending that great fifth-year senior. Herbert Harrigan with the rebound. Three-pointer is missed. Baines had a hand on it, but it was knocked out of bounds by South Carolina. South Carolina has won four in a row. Their only loss this year was to 17th ranked, now 12th ranked Indiana in game one of the Paradise Jam. They followed that loss with wins over Washington State and then their signature win this year over second ranked Baylor in St. Thomas. Cook got hit and will go to the free throw line. I think that Baylor win was an important win for a couple of different reasons. One is one of Taya Cooper who transferred from South Carolina went to Baylor. Then also it's really proof of how good you are or can be to these young players to knock off at the time Baylor was ranked number two. So that's a confidence builder. Early statement this season. I mean, for a team that lost seven 11 letter winners and three starters, that's usually a sign of a rebuilding year for most, most teams. When right. You lose yeah. those kind of numbers. But it's been a rejuvenated program so far this year, not a rebuilding program. Don Staley looks like she's having so much fun at practice this year. A lot different than with last year's team. Beal back to defending Gorecki and another Duke turnover. That's 12. Approaching two and a half to play here in the first half. South Carolina has held Duke to just five points here in this quarter. Knocked out of bounds by Lambert, 14 to shoot for South Carolina. And you see where South Carolina is looking to make that diagonal pass from that elbow, elbow area. Herbert Harrigan needed a minute to secure it, and Beal fighting on the inside was fouled. It's one thing you notice about Bree Beal. She's averaging six rebounds a game. She's very good on the glass, very good defensively. She just looks like she's hard to move, get around, and beat. Very sturdy presence on the court. Very strong player. Three-time Ms. Basketball in the state of Illinois from Rock Island, Illinois. Stepped right into the starting lineup on day one. You're talking about a rebounding going against Maryland and Dayton in back-to-back -back games. She pulled down 10 rebounds in each of those games. That's saying something, especially against Maryland. Four points for Beal. Everyone who has played for South Carolina has scored so far here in the first half. Good child. Seemed almost for a split second like she was surprised she was open. Couldn't hit the three and a second chance here for Duke. Trying to spread the floor it looks like for Gorecki but Beal's having none of it. Just understanding angles. She's not bodying up. Just gets a little deflection to block that shot. Gorecki hits the deck. Good child and Beal do as well. Jump ball, possession arrow, Duke. Five to shoot for the Blue Devils.
Good shot blocking team. You saw the block shot by Beal. And double digit steals a game. Shot clock down to two, down to one, and it's another stop, another turnover for Duke. Turnovers are piling up here for the Blue Devils. Much like the teddy bears will be piling up in just 90 seconds because it's the annual teddy bear toss here at Colonial Life. So hope you have your hard hat ready to go because they're about ready to rain them down on the court once the half ends. Well, we have a couple of teddy bears to throw, but I think that we should keep ours till the rest of them are on the court. <laughs> we'll use them as protection. It is an annual tradition here. So they're getting geared up in the stands to, well, some may need a couple of people to uh, get those teddy bears. Those are the ones that scare me. If they a, come, yeah. yeah, you got to have your head on a swivel here. I'm a on little this. concerned about the big ones. <laughs> and I hope none of them are like beanbag. You know, when you when your teddy bear takes up an entire seat, you know, that's <laughs> that's one to be on the lookout for. One of two again for Beal. Some smaller ones. That, that'd be some friendly fire. 15 point South Carolina lead. Duke still at five points here in this quarter. And another Duke turnover. Cook can't finish. And the Blue Devils come back the other way. And a timeout being called by Duke. 9 turnovers this quarter for Duke, 14 for the game. So while they talk it over, I can remind you that the SEC Network will have you covered from Atlanta for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl on Saturday, December 28th. We kick things off with SEC Nation pregame show at 2 Eastern, that's 1 Central. Then it's the LSU Radio mega cast of the game against Oklahoma. And we wrap up the day with our SEC Now postgame show with highlights, interviews, and a complete game breakdown. You can always watch it all on the ESPN app from anywhere. 15 point South Carolina lead. What can Duke do here to try to turn this tide? I'm gonna give you one of the givens. Okay. Take care of the basketball. You can't use that as the answer. Okay, well that was what I was gonna okay, start I with, figured. number one. But two, they need to get the ball more help Haley Gorecki get more in a scoring position. Good child on the inside, couldn't get it to go. And here's Harris, final minute. Harris looks for the lob for Saxton. Seventh turnover for South Carolina. Gorecki running her off screens. Harris just picks Gorecki's pocket and Gorecki gives the foul. Frustrated. Haley Gorecki averaging nearly 19 points a game, scored off the opening tip, but since then, 0 for 6 from the field. Ty Harris. She's been the most effective defender on Gorecki. Really shut her down. And here's the key, and you talked about it before, it's not just Harris, it's not just Cook, it's not just Beal, it's not just Grissett. They, all of them are taking their turns defending Duke's top player. Well, and Don talks about with this team, she can put challenges in front of each player and go, okay, can you guard Haley Gorecki? And none of these players dare back down from a challenge <laughs> from their head coach, and they have been able to step up to that challenge. I think that with experience as the season goes along, this could be a team that we see in New Orleans. Well, you would assume already playing well when you start three freshmen and two seniors who have won a national championship, that that freshman class will develop and get better. They're already pretty accomplished for what they've done in the first 11 now going on 12 games this season, but you would assume as the year goes along, that this group will get a little bit better. Don Staley may have them shooting free throws after this game at this rate tonight, though. Well, yeah, that's an area <laughs> that they probably need to do a little more work shooting 66%. But if you get putbacks like that from Herbert Harrigan, it helps make the pain of missing the free throws go away. Ten seconds to go as good childs across half court.
Lambert with three, with two, blocked by Saxton, a fitting end to the first half. Duke was held to five points in that quarter. And Victoria Saxton timing as Kyra Lambert goes up, keeps it in bounds, has his presence of mind to gather the ball back. That was a great exclamation point to finish the quarter. Three blocks for South Carolina as a team. And how about that quarter? They outscored Duke 21 to five in that second quarter and they lead 37-19. So you, we're gonna stay here for a moment because you can see some of the fans here saying their final goodbyes to their teddy bears because they're not gonna have their teddy bears in a few moments. The teddy bear toss, South Carolina players are staying on the court here. They're gonna throw some here at halftime. We have our teddy bears ready to go. And the fans here, they bring them to the arena. The players, they're gonna throw them on the court. They'll deliver the teddy bears tomorrow to the Prisma Health Children's Hospital here in Columbia and the Ronald McDonald House. As an added bonus, Duke is going to be taking some of the teddy bears with them back to Durham, and here they come. <laughs> they come. Oh, I just got hit. And it was one of the 20-pounders, too. Heads up. Heads up. I just saved you right there. Oh, good looking out. <laughs> And they just keep coming and coming in waves. Get the assist. It's a teddy bear attack. That's a good, you, you know, the upper deck yes. throw them down, the lower deck then sends it, and then the first row sends it the rest of the way here. <laughs> I mean, the, the players are getting into it. <laughs> They're having a pillow fight with some of the teddy bears. I'm going to throw mine. You ready? You what have you to say goodbye. Wait. No, it's. It's been real. Yes. Oh, I was still. I was told this is I, awesome. I'm gonna go back. I was told to kiss it goodbye. Lori Mancini told me too late. I'd, I'd never had a teddy bear, so I don't Aww. know. So kudos to the fans here and the people in Columbia because this tradition lives on. The court is covered with teddy bears right now. It is halftime here with South Carolina on top. We just got hit again, 37-19. I'd say the teddy bear toss was a smashing success. Dawn Staley's in the lower right part of the screen. She was there catching teddy bears and throwing them up, and court was filled. You're watching SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regents Bank. Eric and Carolyn back here with you. Well, definitely sharing the ball on offense is one of the themes for South Carolina. Being dominating on defense, forcing turnovers, has to be the big takeaway, especially that second quarter for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina turned up the defense, and so Duke started sharing the basketball with South Carolina. <laughs> That's not what you're looking for. <laughs> and then South Carolina started spreading the love. Every player that stepped on the floor in a South Carolina uniform scored a basket. It was equal opportunity for the Gamecocks. And you know what, Eric? They took good shots. Nothing was forced. It all came within the offense, or they were cleaning up on the glass. So Dawn Staley has got to be pleased with the unselfish play of her team. Kiki Herbert Harrigan leading the way with seven points. Destiny Henderson provided a spark off the bench. You saw her two points and all nine players scoring for South Carolina. But Haley Gorecki scored off the opening tip but was held in check after that point. One of seven in the first half for Duke's top score. And it was multiple players from South Carolina that drew the assignment of guarding Gorecki, and they did a great job, especially Ty Harris. South Carolina, first possession of the second half. In that second quarter, Duke turned the ball over 10 times. They attempted eight shots. That's tipped up and in. I think it was last touch by Akinbody James. Boston's going to get credit for it. Defensively, Bill now back on Gorecki. Gorecki tries to get to the basket. Beal made it tough and comes away with it. Harris on the pull-up. 
Second body James the rebound for Duke. Blue Devils were led by Lambert. Knocked down a couple of threes early. She's got six. Oh, she took a few extra steps, I thought. Aki Body James. Herbert Harrigan steps into a three. Not afraid to attempt the three-point shot. That's her 14th attempt this season. You know, Duke using a lot of just the screen at the top for Gorecki to get the ball up top. What if she set back screens? The defense then dropped to the basket, give her more time. Hawking Body James not going to get away with it that time. Gets called for the steps. 16 turnovers now for Duke. She figures she got away with it the first <laughs> yeah, time. Why not? why not take another trip? She thinks it's the holiday season. They're allowing three <laughs> steps. Harris, long for Beal. Herbert Harrigan has it stolen by Gorecki. Gorecki, steal by Beal. Cook. First four points of the corner scored by South Carolina. They've extended it out to a 22-point lead. Finally, a basket as Odom knocks it down. Six points for Odom. Fighting inside, putting it in for two is Beal. Now that's smart by Ty Harris because Aaliyah Boston ran the floor. You better give her a look. Herbert Harrigan comes in to help out. 17 to shoot for Duke. South Carolina defensively came in 11th in the country, giving up 52 points a game. Opponents shooting just under 30% from the field. It's been more of the same tonight here for the Gamecocks. Well, that defense, it's because you got shot blockers. You got Kiki Herbert Harrigan, and she had been leading the team in block shots this season so far. It's been Aaliyah Boston. Herbert Harrigan now at 23 on the season. Good child scores. You have the length of Victoria Saxon coming in off the bench. Lily Grissett, Leticia, Emma here coming in, blocking shots. South Carolina's got great length. Harris buries a three. Seven points now for Ty Harris. South Carolina's margin of victory this year, 29 points a game. Shaping up to be in that zone here already in the third quarter. Three-pointer for Zaya Cook and a timeout called by Duke. Gamecocks rolling here in Columbia, up by 26. The South Carolina Gamecocks have freshmen that are smart. You see where Bree Bill makes the flash. She flashes with a purpose in the middle. She freezes Gorecki in the lane, which buys time for Ty Harris to have time to get that three-point shot off. No one in the double figures yet for South Carolina. Everyone has scored. Cook with nine points to lead the way. It was 16-14 South Carolina at the end of the first quarter. Since then, South Carolina has outscored Duke 33-9. The, the offense for South Carolina just has flown more freely than it has for Duke. 19 turnovers now for Duke. Carolina crashing the glass. Herbert Harrigan had the first try. They keep at it. Boston now getting involved and getting it to go. And Duke's not going to jump with South Carolina. You've got to, once one shot goes up, you have to put a body on somebody and not allow those second chance opportunities. 
South Carolina in their last game was a plus 28 in rebounding margin in their win against Purdue. Plus 11 on the season, they're plus six here today, and a foul called. On the drive as Lambert grabbed. So Harris will go to the free throw line. Lambert's first personal foul. Harris outstanding from the free throw line, 91%. You know, good child is not getting opportunities from Duke from the three point line. Gorecki's really struggling to find her shot. And then there's not really been an inside presence for Duke so far tonight. One of two for Ty Harris. Carolina's eight of 16 from the free throw line. Gorecki. Well, one thing with Beal, and you've talked about her here today, she always seems, maybe for a split second, you feel like she's out of position, but she, she, she isn't out of position for very long. She's always there. She has been outstanding defensively, as has this Carolina team rolling over Duke. Timeout here in the third. That well, was a great start for the Blue Devils. Scored 12 points in the first four minutes, but just 11 since then. Four of 22. They haven't made a three since those first four minutes, and the 19 turnovers. 20 now for the game. The defensive pressure of South Carolina. That's really the reputation or identity of South Carolina this year is going to be their defense, their presence, how tough it is for other teams to score against them. They've taken great pride in that, and that's a good sign coming from a team that the majority are freshmen. 12 steals as a team for South Carolina, three for Ty Harris, three for Bree Beal. Duke tries to turn up the intensity a little bit out of the media timeout. Jada Patrick into the game, freshman for the Blue Devils, and Timeout is going to be called by South Carolina. Looked like Duke was about ready to get a turnover in their favor, but timeout is called with 14 to shoot. A reminder, it's whip around night, January 2nd. This is how we're tipping off the start of women's conference play in the SEC. There are seven games going on, starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 Central Missouri taking on Tennessee. And then games will tip. 15 minutes after that, then 15 minutes, you know, they're going to stagger them. So it built up the excitement on opening night. There's a game that's really hot, really good. We're going to stick there a little bit. Something happens in another game, you're not going to miss it. It's going to be all over the place. Carolyn's going to be here for Kentucky and South Carolina, which is a great way uh -oh. to tip off the season. I think that's a great way to start it up. You're going to have Ryan Howard going against, yeah, the Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. So that's going to be a fun game to watch. Kentucky lost a heartbreaker just the other day to Louisville, but Kentucky looked like a team as well. It's gonna challenge in the SEC. Odom tried to drive, another turnover, number 21. Here is Cook. Cook all the way, and a blocking foul is called on the Blue Devils. Lambert, the one taking the contact. A couple of free throws coming for Zaya Cook. Take one thing about these freshmen, they get a steal and there's no hesitation of what to do with the basketball. They get it headed quickly and aggressively to the offensive end. So this is what we talked about at the very top of our telecast, the season averages for the starting five and what they've done tonight. And it has been spread out pretty evenly. Cook is the first one into double figures tonight for South Carolina, she's got 10. The balance of this team for underclassmen to upperclassmen. Impressive. Down goes Akinbadi James and a turnover for Duke. It's really the consistency. They've had the same starting five for each game, three freshmen and two seniors. Last year they had 11 different starters. No one started every single game, but it's not like the starters are playing marathon minutes at the moment for Dawn Staley's team because we have seen her go to the bench 
quite often right from the very start. She's done it again here in the third quarter. You can see the breakdown right there. Consistency in the starting five, and last year they couldn't find that consistency. Well, you also have players that have bought into their roles. They don't look at coming off the bench as that you're lesser than the ones that start. You all are going to have opportunities to contribute. As Doc Rivers once told me about his team, you're all going to get minutes. What you do with those minutes are up to you, and each player that's come in has contributed, and that's given Don Staley a lot of confidence to use a lot of people. So when you look at what you've seen, and I know it's early, it's not even Christmas yet, what are the things, and you mentioned it before, about this being a team that can compete maybe getting to the Final Four, compete for an SEC championship certainly and what's a tough conference. What are the major pluses in your eyes with South Carolina? What sets them apart? Well, number one, you have to have a point guard that's, that has leadership skills, and Ty Harris has demonstrated that. You have to have an anchor in the post. You're getting that from Malia Boston, and you can rotate in a Victoria Saxon. Then you have to have the ability to stretch the defense, and you've got Kiki Herbert Harrigan who can play that four position, and then the three players in Bree Bill and Lily Grissett that come in. So the balance of scoring, and they rebound the basketball, and this South Carolina team, they defend. South Carolina getting on the offensive glass with their bench player, Saxton, tied it up. It'll be Duke basketball. You know, when you look at South Carolina, Eric, and you were to scout them, and you know, a lot of times you look at the weakest player when you're looking at the opponent and go, well, we won't guard them. We'll help off of them to defend something else. Who are you going to help off of, of this South Carolina basketball team? Right now it's really clicking as foul called on Amir. That's her second. Well, this depth in this competition has made one of the veteran players better in the eyes of Dawn Stanley. So Ty Harris has really responded as a senior to this youthful challenge that comes every day now in practice for South Carolina. Well, for three years, that position's pretty much been hers. It's been a given. And now when you have Desi Henderson that was coming along the way that she was, and now you add Cy Cook at that point guard position, you have people that say, look, if you don't come to work ready to take care of business, your job could be taken. That three-pointer goes down for Jade Williams, her first points. It's interesting for Ty Harris. She became the starter midway through her freshman year, and she fit in with a veteran group and won the title. Now she's the veteran, and the kids are fitting in around her, and she's trying to find a way to fit with them Help, yeah, and make it all work. But I think that that helps her have the perspective for the younger players. Yep. You know, they want to they want to perform for her because she's a senior, just like she did when she was a younger player performing with for her upperclassmen. Saxton scores on one end. Duke trying to counter back, and they throw it away. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter as Patrick will come back in for the Blue Devils and Lambert will go out. You know, one thing that Duke had prepared for is they knew that South Carolina was going to be aggressive. I think they expected South Carolina to be more in the passing lanes and have backdoor opportunities. South Carolina has defended kind of safe, keeping their player, staying between their player and the basket. Good job by Grissett, first on the catch, then to get the finish and draw the contact. Three-point play opportunity coming up. The patience of a little shot fake. You know the defense is going to come flying at you. So you catch, gather, then you sell it. Sell it with that head fake. The defense comes flying by and then finish through contact so you can get the M1. Brissette finishes it off. She's got eight. She's perfect from the field and from the free throw line. Three for three from the field, two for two from the line. A couple of free throws coming up now for Duke. Brissette picks up the foul. Well, Azana Baines is the freshman for Duke who Coach Joe M.P. McCauley describes as the that one-on-one -on -one player, I can take you. She has that I can take you mentality to create 
And right now, if your, your offense isn't flowing, you may have to go to a player who can create some offense for you. South Carolina taking Gorecki out of the game here today as Baines makes them both. She has five points all coming at the free throw line. Jada Claude comes in for Duke. Gorecki checks out. Zaya Cook not phased by the pressure brought by Duke in the full court. And a walk. Emma here had two jobs. Number one, catch it. Number two, pass fake down the middle and then reverse to the opposite side. Baines got caught up in the air, and here's the steal by the redshirt freshman and the finish. Williams. Claude backs in. Amir was there with the defense and now numbers the other way for Carolina. A little bit of showtime. Only works if you get the points out of it, though. Rejected by Saxton. Last touch by Duke. That gets the crowd going here. Victoria Saxon again, the eraser. Yeah, Claude's out of bounds, so South Carolina gets possession. Third block for Saxton. I love watching Victoria Saxon because she likes to do two of my favorite things, block shots and rebound. I always like to watch somebody else do that because I wanted to shoot the ball. <laughs> you did say that you were the one who were blocking shots and rebounding. You got your share. Yeah, but no, I but I like to watch her. She has a passion for blocking shots and rebounding. And she's got respect too. She's one of the co-captains along with Ty Harris and Saxton's a sophomore. That says a lot. When your team votes you to be a captain and you're just in your second season, Henderson will bring it back out, final seconds of the third quarter. You can sit here and try to figure who's going to take the shot because anybody on the floor is an option. And it ends up a foul is called, and it'll be two free throws with 2.5 to go. Claude picks up the personal. So Henderson to the free throw line, 65%. SEC all freshman team a year ago, 16 minutes a game. This year she's averaging 26 minutes a game coming off the bench. And shooting some of the best basketball from the floor, 44% overall, 43% from the three-point line. Lambert. Off the mark, some good defense from South Carolina, but it was about the offense that quarter. They scored 26 points to pull away, heading to the fourth. Getting closer and closer to the start of conference play, so here are some of the players to watch as we heat things up in the SEC. Chelsea Dungy from Arkansas, Ryan Howard of Kentucky, and Kiki Herbert Harrigan the senior for South Carolina. Then you have Renaya Davis that's leading the charge for the Lady Balls, and Kennedy Carter from Texas A&M. All are stars in the SEC. Carter right now leading the conference in scoring at nearly 23 points a game. And Howard and Dungy also in the top three. So Carter and Dungy are going head to head in the SEC opener on January 2nd. You mentioned the Kentucky-South Carolina matchup. Some of the other ones in that Opening week and a half of the season, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, South Carolina, and then LSU playing tonight, taking on Texas A&M on January the 9th. Boston with the putback. 
Ten points, seven rebounds now for the freshman who prepped at Worcester Academy. And when you talk to her after watching her play, ooh, that was aggressive. Hard foul, a chance for a three-point play. Good finish by Lambert. Boston has the personality of a gentle giant, but when it comes to playing, there's no softness about that big girl. <laughs> Sent a message in the opener, her debut, a triple-double against Alabama State. 12 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 blocks. Seventh all-time in South Carolina's history to post a triple-double. Lambert can't finish the three-point play. She is tied for the team lead with Goodchild for Duke with eights. Gorecki just held to those two points off the opening tip. South Carolina has really focused in on her, taking her out of the game here tonight. We're set with 10 off the bench for South Carolina. You know, sometimes players ask coaches, let me try a different position. And the coach will let you try it out, and then you usually figure out you need to be back at your original position. For Lily Grissett, she has really embraced and evolved as a three player. Harris, count the basket and the foul. Aggressive. Harris knows green light means go when it's one on one and she's got the basketball. She gets the finish. Six were in double figures in the win against Purdue. Four in double figures right now as Harris hits the mark. She's got 11. Harris checks out and Beal checks in. Well, just to finish your point on Lily Grissett, she's in the double figures again. She had a season high against Purdue of 11, so she's into double figures back-to-back -back games and playing well as of late, embracing that role and earning more minutes in that role. And Dawn Staley's been pleased with how she's played from the three position. She said that sometimes Grissett does still have a post mentality, but she's breaking that habit and becoming more aggressive and assertive on the perimeter. Speaking of assertive, Henderson drives to the basket. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. When you have a Lily Grissett and her size, and then you have a Leah Boston and Kiki Herbert Harrigan, you just look at the front line size of South Carolina and the rebounding potential. You have Bree Bill as Bree Bill as well that rebounds. Five points for Henderson, and Gorecki gets called for a foul for Duke. Grissette set her up. She was right behind her as Gorecki went to run down the floor. Grissette was right there, drew the offensive foul. Three fouls now on Gorecki. Herbert Harrigan, good play by Patrick to reach in and tie it up, and it'll be Duke ball. Well, these two programs were scheduled to play last December, but winter weather canceled the matchup at Duke. They last met in December of 2017 here in Columbia. Carolina was ranked fifth at the time in that game. They won by 20. Gorecki was held scoreless in their 13 minutes in that game, and South Carolina made it a point to take her out of her rhythm, and they have one of 11 from the field. Nine turnovers. With Duke, you would think that when you take Gorecki out, then it would be either Nay Odom or Kyra Lambert that would be able to get their offense going, but nobody really has been able to get in a rhythm for Duke. Williams couldn't handle it and lost it out of bounds. 26 Duke turnovers. There's Henderson in the backcourt. Duke fighting hard, trying to force a steal, and they get it. Grissett, though, came back to bat it away. Now she gets hit, and I think the foul's going to be on Lambert. Now here's the thing with Lambert. She's had three ACLs. She's got a knee brace on. 
and she plays like there is absolutely no tomorrow. That's her mindset right now, knowing she is playing when a lot of players just would have retired after missing back-to-back -back years. She talked about the encouragement that she received from her coaches and teammates that kept her encouraged to continue to come back. Because you think about that. When you go two years and it's just like, like when you're right ready to come back, something else happens, it would be easy to give up. But she never did. And she attributes a lot of it to Haley Gorecki, who was going through, had gone through the rehab of her hip. And that's why she's a fifth-year senior. They both had continued to encourage each other. Baines looks for help, finds Gorecki, has to change her shot, and finally, after missing 10 in a row, Gorecki gets one to drop. It has been a challenge for her here tonight. Herbert Harrigan drains a corner three. She's in the double figures now with 10. So that's an assist from your center kicking out to your forward that's out on the three-point line in the corner. Brissett picks it up. Brissett tries to go all the way, and she is tripped. Because you think about the matchup in the SEC, when you've got your five player at the top of the key, you find your four player on the baseline corner, three-point line, knocking down that shot. How hard does that make South Carolina to defend? Timeout called with 6.32 to go here in the fourth quarter. We will take it as well. You know, it is the holiday season, so coming up, Carolyn's going to have her list of who's been nice, but more importantly, who's been naughty after this. SEC Network Basketball is presented by Regions Bank, proud to be the official bank of the SEC. Welcome back. It is the holiday season. How many shopping days to Christmas? Oh, not enough for you to get what you need done. She sees you when you're sleeping. She knows when you're awake. She knows if you've been bad or good women's college basketball, so you better be good for goodness sake, because Santa Carolyn is ready to hand out her naughty and nice list. Where do you want to start? Let's start nice. Okay. We'll go nice. So All right, first, number one. Number one is Sabrina Ionescu, 20 triple doubles already. Now, that might be nice for the Oregon Ducks, but probably everybody else <laughs> thinks that might be kind of well, naughty. Yeah, we'll put that on the naughty list, the other side of it. Uh, six ranked teams in the top 25 come from the SEC. That is very nice and could be seven. You know, we've got LSU that is uh, playing Florida Gulf Coast today, so that could be. He's naughty. Our camera guy's naughty. Uh, he was blocking the <laughs> but let's go naughty. You want to go naughty? Let's go naughty. What's naughty? Well, naughty is, for me, the NCAA inconsistency of with transfers able to play or not. I think that when it comes to the women's game, let everybody, if you transfer, let them play. Because the women's careers, when you go professional, they're shorter than the men. And then last but not least. Hey, hold that thought, because this is a visual naughty. So I'm going to have Lori Mancini, our producer, tell us when we can show that last naughty. Because we need to see it. All right, so next. So, oh, a so, little oh, here we go. This is good. Here it goes. This is naughty. This uh, is nasty. I, that <laughs> is, that's not naughty. That is nasty. Ooh, Northwestern State. Uh, the block from Arkansas's Rokia Dumbia just punished that block. <laughs> That was a naughty, naughty thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would sell that. So there you have it. Thank you, Santa Carolyn. We scrambled to try to find you a Santa hat here, but with the headsets on, they just don't fit. It, well, you know, my it, head's big enough already. <laughs> <laughs> Free throws here for Bree Beal. South Carolina in complete control. Two-point game after one, but since that time, it has been all Carolina as they try to improve to 11-1 on the season and win their fifth game in a row. B. 
Beal now with eight. Brissett and Cook leading the way with 12 each. Alyssa Wesselick has come in for South Carolina, and she gets whistled for the foul. So the sophomore from Charleston checks in her sixth game this season. And that's the bench for South Carolina. Everybody has gotten into the game for the Gamecocks as Baines makes the first. Saturday men's basketball doubleheader here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number 12, Auburn hosting Lehigh to get things going at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then it's Oregon State and Texas A&M from Reed Arena in Aggie Land. That starts at 6 Eastern on Saturday here on the SEC Network. You know, Don Staley could possibly sing in the 12 days of Christmas, 12 days of the South Carolina basketball. <laughs> You've got... One junior, two seniors, three sophomores. <laughs> I don't have anything for four, but five super freshmen. You do know it goes down from five down to one, right? I know, but I've had to change it up for copyright purposes. <laughs> You're good. I'm, I'm glad the legal department got a hold of you before you started singing. I wish somebody else got a hold of you before you decided to start singing. Yeah. Maybe a loved one. Or <laughs> to um, tell you to somebody stop. to do give me some singing lessons. <laughs> Williams hits it for Duke. Beal to Henderson. I admire the courage though, Carolyn. Well, I had Takes a little a motivation. Beal. <laughs> what was the motivation? Uh, there was just a little little wager placed on that. Beal now into double figures with 10. Good child answers for three. 11 points for good child. Looking at the matchup this SEC season, South Carolina, you've got the size of Tennessee. You've got the versatility of scoring with a Texas a and I mean, this SEC season is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait till January 2nd gets here. Good child. Quick release. Weselek rips down the rebound. Still another non-conference game before the start of conference play for South Carolina. They'll host 25th-ranked South Dakota Sunday, then their SEC opener home against 14th-ranked Kentucky on January the 2nd. 40-point lead. It's time to take a look at Winning with Style, brought to you by Belt. Sharing the wealth for South Carolina here tonight. They scored through so many different people in so many different ways. They did it inside, they did it outside, they got on the glass. They were unselfish, they shared the basketball. They're fun to watch. And for the second consecutive game, Carolyn, six players are in double figures. That's a turnover, as Henderson couldn't get it, and it'll be Duke Ball. Let me tell you, as a player, you don't want to have sloppy pet play because coach has a lot of extra time to watch a lot of film and cover a lot of things in practice when you don't stay sharp. <laughs> Good child steps out. Can't get the three. Last touch by the Blue Devils. It'll be South Carolina basketball. So South Dakota is next for the Gamecocks here at Colonial Life. Another great crowd here tonight. Then Kentucky, then on the road at Alabama before Arkansas comes to town on the 9th of January. Good feed inside for Sexton. It'll be interesting to see, will Bree Bill draw the assignment of defending Ryan Howard? That'll be a fun matchup. Well, Beal was given the assignment today of trying to eliminate the best player for Duke, Haley Gorecki, and you can just tell. You can just tell she's focused sitting on the bench. She was focused <laughs> on the court. I don't know if she smiles. She is just an intense 
competitor. And as you mentioned, you give someone a challenge who likes a challenge like that, and she embraced it. That's tipped and batted away by Sexton Duke Ball. So a tough night for Duke here on the road. They have three players sidelined with knee injuries, Jada Adams, Jennifer Eze, and Michaela Boykin. They've got the player in Lambert who's missed the last two years with knee injuries, but she was out there fighting today. Well, Lambert and Gurecki both had talked about how frustrating it was for the team not to get into the tournament last year. Coach P talked about she kind of couldn't embrace it or accept it because of the injuries that they went through. But they're expecting this team to get back into postseason play. Akabati James misses the first. Now, much like there was um, incentive for Carolyn to sing her rendition of the 12 Days of Christmas, the motivation here is if there are two missed free throws, people in this building are eating for free. Duke gets the last laugh, but they're still celebrating here in the building because everyone's getting a chicken sandwich. Thompson. Williams with the rebound. The things that happen in a 40-point game <laughs> the week before Christmas. Anything for a free sandwich. <laughs> Baines. Baines drives. That's blocked. Loose ball. Saxton tries to grab it. Scramble continues, and last touch by South Carolina. One on the shot clock here for Duke. Got to look for a lob. You've got time for a quick catch and shoot. Uh, Williams dribble. You didn't have time for a dribble. No dribble allowed. Twenty-nine turnovers for Duke. I tell you that South Dakota game coming up for South Carolina. You know that game right before the Christmas break can be a trap game. You've got to be disciplined. Thompson drains it through. Freshman from Lexington, South Carolina. Because you don't want to lose your momentum going home for Christmas. That makes that Christmas break awfully, awfully. Unenjoyable if you don't take care of business before you go home. Well, that's coming up on Sunday. Duke is off for the Christmas break. They'll be at Florida Gulf Coast. That's a tough trip on December 29th. Then back into ACC play hosting Wake Forest on January 2nd. Patrick. So off for the holiday and then conference play and a tough one on the road at Louisville after that Wake Forest game. Yeah, Louisville is a very, a, another team that's well balanced with their offensive attack. And Jeff Walls does a great job with game strategy, defensive strategy. It's really tough to guard, to score against his teams. Williams picks up the foul. Two free throws coming up for Amir. Looking at the LSU, LSU's up nine right now on Florida Gulf Coast. Down in Florida. Would only be the second loss this season for Florida Gulf Coast. And Mississippi State looking in control against South Florida. That's the one team I thought in the American conference that could challenge the Yukon Huskies. I said challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Considering they haven't lost in conference play as they get ready to play in their last season in the American. Right. The only one who hasn't scored for South Carolina is Wesselick. Saxton will score this trip. Ten different scores for South Carolina. Six in double figures.
Patrick. Amir has it. And here's Henderson. Weselek, can everybody get on the score sheet? Nope. Duke ball. The bench was about to erupt if she was able to score. Then everybody in the Gamecock uniform scored points. South Carolina does it again. Another impressive victory for the nation's fifth-ranked team. The winning streak will stretch out to five. One more non-conference game before the start of conference play, but South Carolina looks to be not only one of the best teams in the SEC, one of the best teams in the country as we head to Christmas. Very balanced. You've got youth and veteran leadership that has blended very well so far in this early season of the 2019-2020 year. 89-46 the final, South Carolina gets the victory. We have more to come here from Colonial Life Arena. We will talk to Ty Harris when we come back to Columbia. Eighty-nine forty-six. the final South Carolina improves to 11-1 on the season. Great balance, great teamwork, and the player that makes it all happen. That's what we're saying, Ty Harris. <laughs> joins us now. Well, when you're the point guard, you get that responsibility, but it does seem like watching this team, it feels different. Tell us how you feel things are working right now for South Carolina. Does it feel a little bit different for you all? Um, It definitely does feel different. Just the atmosphere, uh, the freshmen, they come in and make a huge impact. Uh, Everybody's loving. Uh, we're happy for each other, and I think that's the best part is that we're genuinely happy to get uh, other people involved. Everybody's loving? You mean everybody's getting along great, including <laughs> yes. Coach? Yes. Because Co yes. you're a senior now. You can speak your mind <laughs> no, no, freely. Yeah, no, she's good, too. <laughs> okay, good. That's good to know. How nice is it to have so many targets, so many scoring threats around you? Um, super nice because, one, you can't lock in on one person. Uh, you don't know at any given night who's going to step up and who's going to do this, so it's going to make it harder for our uh, the uh, people that we're playing to guard us. How has your role changed? When you first became a starter, you were the freshman trying to mm -hmm. fit in with these seniors. Yeah. <laughs> now it's completely flipped. Yeah, um, just coming from being a facilitator, and uh, that was my main main focus, but now I got to be more aggressive and uh, pick and choose. And now that uh, it's, I got one year left, this is my last year, and I'm trying to make it to the league, I got to showcase what I could do too. Well, your other partner in crime in that senior class is Kiki Herbert yeah. Hager. She's <laughs> playing some of the her best basketball. Yes, yes, yes. How yes. have you seen her game evolve? Um, I see it all the time. We're roommates, so uh, we always talk in the room and stuff like that. But um, she's just more happier. I feel like uh, Aaliyah takes a lot of lot of attention, so it frees up McKee and her sh mid range shot is water. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you can scout that, but she's it's gonna be really good. And she can shoot with threes and. She just scored at all three levels, so that's really good. So they say about freshmen, and you can speak from experience, they're better to keep their ears open and their mouths closed. <laughs> What's this group like? Um, they do a little bit of both. I mean, it's not in a bad way. The, mouth, the uh, talk is not bad because they ask questions, which is needed because you, need, you know they're listening and they're trying to learn, and uh, they're just trying to get everything out and get jitters out, and uh, they're doing a really good job. You were part of a national championship team as a freshman. What ingredients does this team have? So far, I know it's early. Yeah. That makes you feel like yeah. this a team that can make a run. Um, I think just having uh, – I think our X factor is uh, Brie Bill. Just because she's taller and uh, she, can, she can stretch the court out and then she can go rebounding. It's just – it's a mismatch. So, I, I like I like having her out there. A lot of smiles. That's what happens. <laughs> we have six right? in double figures and you win big over Duke. Ty, thanks so much. We Thank appreciate you. it. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Ty Harris from South Carolina. Another victory for the Gamecocks. They roll here tonight. 89-46 is the final score. Coming up next, a replay of this morning's matchup between UCLA and Georgia. For Carolyn Peck and our crew, I'm Eric Fried saying so long from Columbia.